What's going on guys? Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be doing an overview of the Bivik 55 inch four player Secret Wars arcade cabinet. Black Panther, Spider-Man, Secret Wars, Wakanda. <laughs> Alright guys, you know the drill. If you're not following me on Instagram, all the socials, the link tree, I freaking make it easy for you guys. At Vic underscore VP, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow all the socials. If you did, you would have seen Ground Up. Just like all my other cabinets and all my other builds, I'm, I'm like a broken record. It's kind of something that, just like my intro, it's something that I just gotta throw in there. So, be sure to follow on all the socials, at Vic underscore VP, make sure you put the underscore I gotta put these plugs in because I get new subscribers and new people that haven't seen all the other videos and yeah, that's gonna be forever, so get used to it. <laughs> now on this one I'm gonna focus on an overview of the complete system that you see in front of me. I will be doing a separate video of a full in-depth, probably gonna be an hour long kind of video. This one I'm gonna do kind of an overview, what the system is, what's going on here, all the add-ons, all the, the little features to it, little tiny bit about the art, little tiny bit about the customer in depth full wasting my breath will be on a, another video so let's start with the basics what do we have here we are looking at the 40 terabyte ultimate console inside an arcade cabinet dubbing it the ultimate arcade so this is running a pc based system we do have a four player arcade deck eight button layout for players one and two and six button layouts for players three and four i got two cup holders on this we have the dedicated four-way. We got the Tron stick on this. Sorry, sound. We have the Z533 from Logitech. 55-inch 4K TCL add-ons. We got four Xbox One controllers. We got two aim tracks on this. Stay tuned for that because one of them is Bluetooth wireless. And we do have the May Flash bar that supports two Wii modes for the Wii. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping in real quick, I forgot to mention, this does also have LED blinky on it. Yes, the lights, the buttons light up according to the main game. Stay tuned again, just like we do with Project Canada. Only works really for the main games, but this is also running LED blinky. Let's talk real quick about the actual PC specs that are in this. The PC in this is actually a totally custom built PC. This was not a pre-built Customer purchased all the PC hardware, sent it to me, and I had to actually build it. He sent me an empty case, the motherboard, it's an MSI motherboard. So the PC specs on this, we are looking at an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, running an RTX 3060 on this. As far as the drives now, I actually have to open up like Windows drives, because he does have a lot of drives. Um, not exactly sure why we went this route. I mean, I kind of have an idea, but let me just tell you real quick. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six separate drives in this computer. Off the bat, he has in total 46 terabytes in this system. My actual hyperspin files is actually 42 on this. I have to kind of update my whole Excel sheet, which I plan to do after this build. So. Again, honestly, a lot of the majority is PC games. That is the only thing I'm currently downloading and keeping up to date. I believe right now my PC games alone, that is all the PC games, arcade style PC games, and the PC racing games, I think I'm officially at five terabytes right now sitting. So I have to kind of reword it and say it's a 42 terabyte hyperspin build on this. Now again, he has combined in these six drives, it's 46 terabytes. Um, off the bat, his boot, the C drive, instead of getting a one terabyte, he actually got a two terabyte M.2 SSD. So M.2 is the small one that goes onto the motherboard. That is a high speed SSD. He also has another M.2 SSD running four terabytes. Then he got uh, four regular hard disk drives. He has two 16 terabyte drives and he has two four terabyte drives in total 46 terabytes yes he is future proof to the max he has an additional four terabytes of empty space available for honestly his pc gaming so now this stay tuned for the detail on this because i'm gonna announce i've been doing it 
Uh, and now that I kind of have a perfect example of it, you know, when people ask me, hey Vic, how much is this cabinet? I want this cabinet, I don't know. I give them a price and they always give me this, oh, you know, bug eye look. Uh, this cabinet, it's a very unique kind of build and I'm very happy to offer this. This cabinet, the customer supplied everything. Everything. If you've been messaging me, I've been saying this and I put a bunch of G's. Everything. Everything you see here, the customer supplied. I only supplied the wood. I made the cabinet, obviously. I did the artwork, so the art print and also making the artwork. And I did the T-molding, obviously. I put the T-molding in. And I configured the PC. That was it. That was my job, was to configure the PC. He supplied everything, and I have a price for that. If you are looking to kind of save money, I have this option. One thing, though, to note with this specific cabinet, he sent me... PC parts that I recommended, you know, I, I give you my basics, i7, 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. I, I'm an MSI fanboy, so I always suggest MSI. He did get an MSI motherboard. I suggest a 3060 Ti or higher. And then as far as the drives, always at least a one terabyte M.2 SSD. The rest could be regular hard drives, but as you can see, he went and got four additional terabytes of an M.2 SSD, and obviously I filled it up. He sent me everything I did have to, you know, I have a number, and then as you can see, I had to do more work, meaning I had to build the PC. I'm gonna go full in-depth on that, but basically, this right here, what you see, the customer supplied everything. Again, I like to be flexible, I like to help in any way possible. I gave this option because this customer initially asked me for what Project Canada turned out to be, and eyes lit up, and I said, listen, if you want, you supply everything. And I do like doing that because customers then could really sit down, and see how much hardware is alone. I, I, I'm gonna talk in depth in the next video, but just keep in mind, you're gonna hear a kind of price plan that I do have for anyone, I like to help. So now we'll talk about like the little add-ons and such. So obviously this does have, like I said, the eight button layout for players one and two, six button layouts for players three and four. I always recommend that. This customer said, Vic, what do you recommend? Because Project Canada had six button, four button layout. I said, for me, Percy, to future-proof yourself, eight button, six button layout is the best thing. No need really for eight button layout on players three and four, not to mention you're gonna need a bigger deck and such. So he asked my suggestion and I gave it to him. He did like Project Canada servos. He's like, oh Vic, I like the idea of the servos, but I don't wanna spend the extra money on the servos because he saw the price of the servos. He's like, what can we do? I said, you can obviously put a regular dedicated four-way. And he goes, you know what Vic, I like that idea because I don't have to worry about the motor on the servo going bad and now I have to replace the motor. I said that honestly, dedicated four-way, to me it's just great. He did want the Tron flight stick and we were also looking at the spinner on this. Um, I guess we kind of noticed the price of the spinner. He said, you know what Vic, hard pass, I'm not even going to play that many games on it. So he just did the Tron stick. I'm going to go full on depth with my opinion on the Tron stick and the spinner. Uh, but yeah, we have our four player deck, dedicated four way. I got my three inch track wall on this and to make it nice, I did put the two cup holders on it. He originally didn't want any and I said there's going to be an empty space, let's try the cup holders and I did put two cup holders in. Now talking about the add-ons, this is pretty cool, I mean again it is kind of basic. I always do the four Xbox One controllers. I always recommend these, I always do these. I don't do the 360s, It's they're old. Get rid of it. Be gone with it. This right here has one USB dongle and it can connect up to six Xbox controllers. So he does have four Xbox One controllers. He did go the route of getting uh, three different colors. He has two blues, one red, and one black. Then he wanted light guns. Obviously everybody sees all the light gun builds that I've done, especially with Project Canada with the jolts. People love the idea of the jolts and they go, you know what Vic? I don't want to pay that price. What can we do? So I always do recommend the aim tracks. Aim tracks are cheap. That is the only reason I recommend the aim tracks. Aim tracks are cheap. They get the job done. Are they accurate, Vic? I mean, for me, it's fine. You know, it is something you have to get used to, but if you are the type that's very picky with accuracy, gun for IR is the best gun on the market. It's not even a gun, it's the system. Gun for IR is the best. You can't go wrong with Gun for IR. Ray over at RP Electronics has many options. I believe to date his cheapest gun is like in the 400 range. 
And now you might be saying, that's not cheap. Well, that's what it is. You want gun for IR, you want accuracy, that's what it is. Uh, you talk to Ray and you know do that. Ray is my friend. I like all of his builds, but again, uh, in my clientele, I got customers that are diehard like gun fans and I always just the jolts. That's number one. Uh, you know, Ray has substitutes, but people like the sliding recoil. And not to mention now, Ray is doing, we're doing one big one for California. This guy got real time crisis light guns. Those shits are heavy. The, just the power bank it needs to power is going to be insane. So stay tuned for that. But again, it all depends on you. If you're a diehard light gun fan, spend the money. If you're kind of like me and you're kind of like this customer, it's like, hey, I got a kiddo and you know, whenever I have free time, I'll play it. Aim tracks do the job. Yes, I mean, again, I, I can't, I don't know what else to say. They're cheap. And that's the best way to explain it. it is cheap. And some people want to go cheap and I get that. Me personally, that's what I would do. I'm only going to play my cabinet if I get lucky, especially with a shooting game once a week. I'm going to go cheap with a light gun and do it. On that note, I said to this customer, and I also did it for myself, I looked at AimTrack and AimTrack does have a wireless Bluetooth option. And uh, I got excited. Brad D, shout out to Brad D. He does have a video on this, the Bluetooth light gun. And surprisingly, there is not much videos about it. I will be making a video talking about this specific add-on. It was a little bit of a headache, especially trying to get two players. I'm telling you now, you cannot do two player wireless, you can't. That is why on this build we have one wireless gun that's for player one, and player two is the wired gun. Yes, in the promo video, in the regular photos, yes. You do have one gun that is wireless, and you do have one gun, I should say this is wireless, and one gun that is wired. Uh, no joke, spent two weeks of my life going back and forth talking to Andy over at Aintrack I was gonna return this whole Bluetooth kit and I bought four of them because I thought two of them for this customer and two of them for me I bought four of them didn't work out the way I planned and basically it was gonna cost me more money to ship it back than what I paid for it so right now I have three lying around on my specific build I didn't even put the Bluetooth I'll explain why in the full detailed one but again we do have two aim tracks for the two light guns all the gun games work and I do also have the Wii light gun games that went from 70 games to like 20 uh, basically when it comes to the Wii games in real life the Wii you could just use the actual gun itself or some games do need a nunchuck I have removed those games from that Wii gun game wheel. The last and final add-on, which is very cool, the customer wanted it, he saw it, it was great. He did get, sorry, got my charging cable there for the aim track. He did get the May flash bar with two Wii modes. I did message the customer because he did not get um, the nunchucks. So I did tell him, hey, I suggest you get nunchucks, they're cheap, you might as well get it. So we do have a May flash bar. I do not have this May flash bar mounted, uh, kind of on purpose. In all honesty, as you can see, even with Project Canada, once you start adding USB devices, shit hits the fan, not in a bad way. IDs get moved and player one turns to player three. It's, this right here is convenient. Yes, it is a wire, it's gonna be visible, but Basically, the easiest thing to do is you take your main flash bar. I always, in the video, you see it. I basically put it right here with the wire kind of going around the joystick so it kind of stays put and then plugging it into the USB here. Again, I know, yes, it's an eyesore. You've got a cable now, Vic, and like, what the hell? But again, whenever you're gonna actually play the Wii, you plug it in. The other option is I could hard mount it to the TV, but now it's kind of like we. I have to install a USB like remote thing to turn on and off this Wii bar and trying to explain people that it's it, it doesn't work out in my opinion this is the easiest most user-friendly way hey I want to play Wii cool plug in the bar grab your Wiimote and rock that is the best way to do it so um, shockingly real quick notice about this he did I was very surprised it worked this is a legit May flash bar it's a legit May flash bar. You only need one, and I believe one could connect up to four Wiimotes. You only need one, okay? Shockingly, he did get, from the looks of it, this is like an Amazon knockoff Wiimote. 
and it worked. I was very surprised. If you go back in my videos, I did Robbie's Ultimate Console, and we did the Wiimotes, and we tried the knockoffs that didn't work. So I don't know exactly which one he got. It came in a two-pack, and it came with like the silicone casing, so take that info with what you can. Uh, but these are not official Wiimotes, but it worked. I was very surprised it worked. So now real quick, let's talk about the audio on this. Just a quick note, because you see it at the edge. This is a 4K TCL TV. Again, same thing. Uh, I use these TCLs, but customer supplied it, meaning he purchased it. So there you go. I always have like the stickers still on. So once this gets delivered, he'll take it off. It just shows that it's still a brand new TV. But let's talk about real quick the audio setup on this. I am running the Logitech Z533. I believe it's 100, yeah, it's 120 watt sound system on this. Got a nice little feature here with the remote here. Does have the subwoofer in the rear. You do have the bass volume knob here. And the big thing is that I did do the speaker grills here. This grill right here is a drill template. I manually drill this and I take the Z533 monitor. I decase it, I'll take you around back. I decase those, I never keep them in the case. I decase them and then mount it here. So as you can see, different than Project Canada. Project Canada had his very unique monitor. This one, again, kind of like my standard, even Konami cabinet, the vertical cabinet. I drilled the outline and then I put the speaker underneath. The one thing I did learn, and it's gonna have to happen, is the controllers for these. Even if I did the Z313, the cheaper one, the controllers, I have to mount it to the actual physical cabinet. When it comes to shipping and all that, the control panel is detachable. But these controllers are connected to the subwoofer. And it basically, I, I really wanted to take this and put it underneath the control deck here. Number one, that's like hot glue and after time it's going to fall off. This is probably the best solution here, just putting it right there. Uh, this way, you know, you can just reach over while you're playing. You know, you could raise your volume up and down. That's probably the easiest thing. I was gonna put it underneath, but then I had to remember, if you take the control panel out, you're gonna rip out the whole controller. So this is probably the only viable place that I could put the controller. It basically has to go with the base of the cabinet. That's what I'm getting at. It has to go with the base. So now real quick, as far as the rear of the cabinet, the rear is the rear. Remember, this is the one thing I'm gonna mention in the actual full in depth video. These computers, um, I, don't, I don't, I haven't seen anybody do it. I'm gonna say it's just me that does it. These computers here, I do like them in their own case. I don't like them hard mounted to the actual cabinet because the way I build my drives, and as you can see when it comes to the Wii, the Wii U, the GameCube, the PC games, you could actually take this computer out. And I'm gonna do it in the full video. You could take this computer out, bring it to your kid's room, and play. This is, a, this is a gaming PC. It does not have to stay inside of this arcade cabinet. Once you remove the arcade controllers, yes, you do lose function on some of the systems like MAME uh, and like Sega Model 2 and Model 3 and Techno Parrot, you know, minus like the driving games that use the Xbox controllers. Other than that, all other systems are mapped to the Xbox controller. You could navigate Hyperspin with the Xbox controller. So this does not have to stay in this cabinet. It is a multi-use PC. With that in mind, yes, the wiring, especially for the USB stuff, it's, it's there. I mean, yes, oh my God, Vic, you didn't clean up the wiring. Honestly, in this situation, I mean, I'm still gonna clean it up. But hypothetically, I put the PC, I'm gonna mount it, but I always disconnect USBs just in case, God forbid, in transit it moves. I don't want like a USB to get crushed and now the motherboard's messed up. I do that on purpose, so keep that in mind. And also remember, you have to remove the USBs. You could pull the PC out. I'm gonna do that in the video. So it's kind of difficult to keep wiring clean in all honesty. This right here, this whole patch right here, this is all USBs. That right there is running LED Blinky. That's running the, 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 the three USB encoders, um, the trackball USB. That's what this is right here. So that's gonna be the best wiring that you could do. So now with that being said, yes, you could remove the computer that is inside of the arcade cabinet. I've said in the past, this is the ultimate console. That's the computer inside of an arcade cabinet, dubbing it the ultimate arcade. I firmly believe as of right now, I am the only person that does that. 
you are spending a lot of money on that computer. I mean, the specs on this PC, not to mention all the extra drives, and not to mention going six terabytes worth of M.2 SSD, there is a lot of dinero in the PC, so why limit yourself to the actual arcade cabinet? You could remove it. That's like the best thing about it. Playing like systems like PS2, for example, like me, I even say I'm trying to stream and all that, and now I actually have a stream deck, the, the Steam deck, I should say, I have a Steam deck. Uh, I'm playing the classics on that. And, you know, I get that common thing, I always say it, like, Vic, can I play Grand Theft Auto on Ar No, you can't play Grand Theft Auto on Arcade 6. It's just more about, the reason I did that is because, you know, you're in front of your arcade cabinet. And if you want to play Grand Theft Auto, are you going to stand here? Like, I personally can't stand here. I'm not going to be that close, I'm going to come back more. But I can't stand and play Grand Theft Auto for more than like 15 minutes. If I get deep into like action, I gotta sit. Oh, Vic, I can get a stool. Yeah, you could you could get a stool and sit, but like me personally, if I'm gonna play like Grand Theft Auto, God of War, I gotta sit. I gotta sit at my battle station and all that. So even on my personal by Vic cabinet, that PC is right now in the cabinet, but if I'm gonna play like PS1, PS2, GameCube, PS3, I'm gonna take this, I take the PC out and I put it, I connect it to my battle station and I game on like that. So keep that in mind, this is a PC. It does a lot. Essentially, yes, if you exit out of hyperspin, it's your regular PC. I right now could launch Modern Warfare 2 Warzone on this arcade cabinet. Am I gonna play with arcade sticks? No, like, please. You cannot play Warzone with arcade sticks. I unfortunately, like when this launches, it's gonna ask me for a phone number. I make fake accounts. I say in my, I make fake emails as you can see right now, I'm going to launch Call of Duty, Warzone, like, boom, that's it. Yes, this is launched outside of Hyperspin. When it's in Steam, there's so much stuff going on in the background, you can't launch this in Hyperspin. As you can see, this plays. I did it on my, on my Instagram story. I, I logged in as myself, but it messed up my personal settings when I went back to my PC, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm running right now Steam. Uh, I even put, like, Counter-Strike on this and I put um, Epic Games, I put uh, uh, Rocket League, you know, Epic Games is giving you free games. This right now is your standard gaming PC and the specs on this, uh, he'll play 4K. If he has a better monitor, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, that 3060 will run it. I mean, it's ultimate. It's the ultimate arcade cabinet. <laughs> I'm going to touch base real quick on, and it's cool, I could use the trackball or I could use the gamepad. Shout out to Project Canada. I normally am not a fan of these, the keyboard, mouse, gamepad stuff, but I've grown to get used to them. They're pretty compact. You know, you can put it in your pocket, you can put it inside the cup holder if you want. So uh, I do use these. Uh, right now, I've, I launched Hyperspin just to kind of have it in the background. Let's talk real quick about the actual artwork that's on this. Um, Customer originally wanted a Black Panther, Spider-Man, Miles Morales themed cabinet. That was his big thing. He wanted that. Uh, we were going back and forth. I said it briefly in a recent video that went out for the had a buyer's guide for Bivik. Um, we originally started out with the actual Black Panther movie images. Uh, I made like two renditions and it was like, no, Vic, like it, it didn't work out the way we planned it. So off the bat, I knew we were gonna do a collaboration of Spider-Man and Black Panther. I'm gonna move you around. Uh, I'm not a comic fan. Uh, you know, even in the intro uh, of this video where I was like, Spidey, and then I said Wakanda. I don't even know what that means. I just know that that's a thing. But um, yes, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a comic book person. Uh, so while you take a real quick look at the Black Panther, I'm gonna launch the one game that at least has Spider-Man on it, and it is the most recent game that just got launched. That is, it's not recent to the to the world, but for the PC side, is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Spider-Man Miles Morales theme uh, game. Uh, so I'll launch that real quick. I'll turn on an Xbox controller. As you can see there, basically we went comic theme. I grabbed a bunch of Black Panther. He actually sent me links to the Black Panther comics and all that, and I made basically the white borders for it. Same thing when it comes to like the Spider-Man side. Uh, Miles Morales was the main character. Uh, so we're not looking at regular Spider-Man here. We're looking at Miles Morales, Spider-Man. So same kind of theory. I went comic book borders on the left. This one here, I went spider borders on the right, the web borders on it. So 
there you go that basically the image is translated to the actual control panel again i'll go in depth on it uh, I did make this very cool marquee with the Black Panther and Miles Morales face collide, so that was pretty cool. The main thing that he did also want was this Secret Wars um, comic kick plate. Like, when it came to the kick plate, I was like, do you want to continue this? He's like, no, I want one solid image, which is the Secret Wars comic. And that's where I dubbed it the Secret Wars. He was big on the quote. I do like that people noticed this. Uh, he was like, Vic, are you going to do the same thing for me where you're going to have this lip and I could put a quote? I was like, yes, I, I have to do it. I have to put vinyl on this. So he's like, I want this quote. And I kind of went with Marvel coloring as far as the red background and the white letters. And uh, awesome. Like I said, I'll go full in depth as far as artwork on that. But it's a beautiful cabinet. Uh, again, I'm not personally a comic book person, but it looks great. So I just showed some quick gameplay of the Spider-Man Miles Morales. Again, brand i mean not brand new but again originally released i believe on the ps4 the ps5 then it just recently got ported to the pc that's why i keep saying brand new because it just came for the pc and again modern computer that's with the advantage of getting current gen pc stuff this is a 4k tcl tv this tv outputs at 60 hertz for 4k you could invest in a better tv or a better monitor and get 120 hertz Games like this, it's fine. Um, you know, if you're gonna play like Call of Duty, uh, you know, you do want more hurts. That's just kind of gaming, nerding out stuff. But as you can see, again, using the Xbox controller, the controller is vibrating. I'm able to jump. Uh, we'll turn the lights off. Turn off the garage lights. Turn off the garage lights. Okay. Sorry, Alexa just being a pain. <laughs> But yes, as you can see, it's great. It looks awesome. But going back to what I'm saying right now, I'm playing Spider-Man on the arcade cabinet. Standing. Yes, I could grab a stool. Yes, I could, you know, sit. But, you know, whenever you're like deep hard, I could also move back because I'm kind of close. <laughs> but it's kind of like, you know, if you're deep hardcore into it, you probably want to just move the PC to a chair. Now, here's a quick jab at these builders and all that. I'm right now playing a PS4, PS5 game, and these builders are claiming that, oh, I have PS4 and PS5 emulation. You do not. <laughs> there is no PS4 currently to date. There is no PS4, PS5 emulator. This game was ported to the PC. It is a PC game now. That is how you get people that have these PS5 hyperspin launch box themes, and it's really a PC game in the background. So just keep that in mind, please. Jesus Christ. But... All in all, awesome stuff. I'm able to exit out using the Xbox controller. It's great. Remember though, this is a PC game, so I can't, it's not a one button hold for this. I have to exit out like I normally would. It's gonna bring back into hyperspin. I'm gonna regain control. LED blinking's gonna come back to life. I can basically bring it back and exit out and go. That's it, awesome. Again, all on the Xbox controller. That's why again, if you disconnect the arcade, you want to use your Xbox controller, you can still navigate with the Xbox controller and such. It's awesome. Turn on the garage lights. So now, again, big kind of thing. If you do want to shut down, I always say exit out of hyperspin, bring it back to the desktop. Obviously, I do have the power button, which is a RK button, on the rear. Let the PC shut down. Also, I do suggest that you turn off the actual TV. TCLs have a nice little button right in the middle. So let the TV power down. Give it five seconds and then totally power off the cabinet. Uh, as you can see again, LED blinky is connected to the computer, but underglow LEDs is connected, just regular LED strips. So that will stay on along with the PC power fans in the rear. Now everything's off. I turn off and there you guys have it. The Bivik 55 inch four player Secret Wars Ultimate Arcade Cabinet. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to go full force, in-depth, talking a lot. I'm going to talk a lot. Talked a lot now, but wait till you see the next video. <laughs> Game on, my guys. Game on.